Okay, so I have pulled three problems from uh, my Erwin and Nelms textbook because that's the one um, that I think probably does the best job of teaching three phase power. And I have pulled out three questions uh, having lightning bolts. So a lightning bolt question means that this is the hardest that they have to offer. And I am going to show to you guys with your input that even these quote unquote hard problems aren't actually hard. Okay. So, in this first problem, we are told that in a balanced three phase YY system, the source has a positive phase sequence with VAN is equal to 120 angle 40 degrees volts RMS. Um, we are told that the A phase line current is 7.1 angle negative 10.28 degrees amps RMS. And we are told that our line impedance is 0 0.8 plus J1. And we are asked to find the load impedance. So the first thing I'm gonna do is write down the pieces of information that we were told. So we were given VAN is 120 angle 40 degrees volts RMS. When it says the A phase line current, what, what does that mean? IAA. IAA, absolutely right. It has a value of 7.10 angle, negative 10.28 degrees amps RMS. And our line impedance is 0 0.8 plus J1. So which one is that, ZW or ZY? ZW. Zero point eight plus J one ohms. We were trying to find our load impedance, so that means we're trying to figure out what the quantity ZY is. And just for the sake of argument here, I'm going to label that line current IAA like so. Okay, so we have a YY system, so we can easily throw this into our single phase equivalent circuit model, right? So that would look something like this. And we are given this quantity IAA. We're trying to solve for ZY. Someone who isn't Ian, tell me how to do it. KVL. Um, okay, that's fair. So the suggestion here is that VAN is equal to IAA times ZW plus ZY, which I absolutely agree with. So from this, we could say that ZY is VAN minus IAA times ZW divided by IAA. Simply reinterpreting things slightly, the voltage drop over the load impedance divided by the current flowing through the load impedance has to equal the load impedance, right? So let's toss this into a calculator real quick.
see, 7.1 angle, negative 10.28. I get 16.326 angle, 52.216. Degrees ohms, or for those of you that prefer a rectangular form, ten plus J twelve point nine ohms. Anybody else verify that? Always a possibility. I might have Brandon, you're shaking your head like you got something different. Let me do this again real quick. Okay, so I probably shut up. Watch, probably fat fingered something here real quick. Uh, Ten plus twelve J. Okay, what did you get for the polar form? Fifteen point six two angle fifty point one nine three. All right, probably messed something up typing it. Methodology is correct. All right, so this is a one uh, lightning bolt problem taken care of. Was this remotely difficult? Absolutely not. Okay. All right, let's move along to a different problem. In this one, we have a three phase balance delta delta system where our source has a positive phase sequence. The line and load impedances are 0 0.3 plus J 0 0.2 ohms and 9 plus J 6 ohms respectively. If the load current in the delta is IAB is equal to 15 angle 40 degrees amps RMS, we want to find the phase voltages of the source. So again, I'm going to take the time to write down our given information here. So we are told IAB is equal to 15 angle 40 amps RMS. We are told that ZW is 0 0.3 plus J 0 0.2. And we are told in this case that Z delta is nine plus J six ohms. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and write down here where that current IAB flows. All right. So, Let's talk about a couple of things here, okay? We know a phase current in our load, okay? Um, the impulse here is to do a source transformation to get us a Y connected source on the left hand side, a source transformation to get a Y connected load on the right hand side. One thing that we need to pay attention to regarding that, though, is that this current IAB is a current flowing through the delta load in a delta configuration, which means our phase current is going to change considerably when we do that source transformation or when we do that uh, load transformation. Okay, so we need to pay attention to that. A quantity that isn't going to change when we do that transformation is our line currents, right? Because the line current is just the current flowing through the transmission line and we never do anything to the transmission line. Always just three sets of transmission lines hooked up like this. So how could we go about figuring out what our line current is? KCL at the top node, okay. So let's call this current IAA. And for the sake of argument, I'm gonna label this current 
ICA, like so. If we apply KCL at our topmost node, we have IAA is equal to IAB minus ICA, which is the same as IAB times one minus one angle negative 240 degrees since we have a positive phase sequence. So that's gonna look like 15 angle 40 times one minus one angle negative 240. I get 25.981 angle 10 degrees. Yes, RMS. All right, we all okay with this? Okay, so now I'm going to draw my single phase equivalent circuit now that I have some kind of starting point to deal with, right? Because prior to this, I have no idea what my source voltages are or anything like that. Um, and I don't really have any idea what else is going on. The only thing that really directly transfers is what's going on with my transmission lines. So here's my voltage VAN, which I do not know. Here's my impedance ZW through which a current IAA flows, which I do know. Here is my impedance ZY, which I actually don't know. How do I get my Y load impedance if I know my delta load impedance loop. Divide by three. Divide by three. All right, so that's going to look like nine plus J6 ohms over three. So that shouldn't have a unit. Is going to look like three plus J2 ohms. Yes, it happens a lot. All right, so what useful piece of information can we glean from this? And just as a, a moment, recall that we're effectively looking for VAB, VBC, and or VCA. And if we have one, we have all three because we know that they're shifted by 120 degrees. So what piece of information are we looking for in our single phase equivalent circuit to get one of these quantities? Jay, do you have any thoughts? What piece of information from this circuit down here am I trying to get so that I can easily determine one of these three quantities? VAN, absolutely right. If I know my Y connected phase voltage, I can easily determine my line voltages for that Y connected load, which are going to be the exact same thing as the phase voltages of the delta connected load. So that's 100% correct. We're looking for the quantity VAN. So, how would I go about finding that quantity? How do we do use voltage division if we don't know what VAN is? V 
Jared, you got any thoughts? Yeah, Ohm's law. We know this current IAA, that multiplied by these two impedances in series gives us VAN, 100%. So let's see here, ZW is 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2 I. And ZY is three plus J2. And I get 103. 0.042 with an angle of 43.690 degrees. That's RMS. That seemed legit. Okay, getting some thumbs up here. Now that I know that phase voltage of my Y connected source, how do I get the phase voltage of the equivalent delta connected source? Multiply by square root of three, angle 30 degrees. Absolutely right. One hundred and seventy eight point four seven five angle seventy three point six nine zero degrees volts RMS and then for VBC and VCA we would simply subtract one hundred and twenty two degrees or excuse me one hundred twenty degrees and for VCA we subtract two hundred forty degrees from our phase back. Okay. That's another lightning bolt difficulty problem that we've knocked out in less than 10 minutes. All right, the last one that I have for you guys today. I was honestly expecting this to take longer, but that's okay. So this guy right here. In a balanced three phase system, the source has an ABC phase sequence and is connected in delta. There are two loads connected in parallel. So this is the first one that kind of makes things legitimately a little difficult. Uh, the line connecting the source to the loads has an impedance of 0 0.2 plus J0.1. Load one is connected in Y with a particular impedance. Load two is connected in delta with a particular impedance. And we are given the current in the delta load. So the first thing, uh, I had originally drawn this circuit, but did not get recovered. So let's talk about how to draw something as annoying looking as this, because it's your first time having to do it. Our source is connected in Delta. So I'm going to start with that. So here we have VAB, here we have VBC, here we have VCA. So my delta connected source is a delta connected source. Nothing wild or crazy there. I have my transmission line. Again, nothing particularly crazy here. I'm gonna go ahead and label these impedances as ZWs. All right, 
Now comes the arguable hard part. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my delta connected load. So here's the delta. Here's a Z delta. And I'm going to give myself room and put the other guy over here. So let's start. Is this a correctly drawn delta load? I have one phase impedance between the A and B transmission lines. I have one uh, impedance between the B and C terminals. And I have the third impedance between the C and A terminals. So this is absolutely delta connected. All right. So now I'm going to need to draw a load that is connected between the A terminal and neutral, the B terminal and a neutral, and the C terminal and a neutral. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna put my neutral terminal right here in the middle so that this guy right here represents the A phase. This guy down here represents the C phase. And finally, this guy right here represents the B phase. So this is what a Y connected load in parallel with a delta connected load looks like. This is as hard as it can be. Okay? Now let me explain what I mean by that. If I had other loads, they would have to be in either a delta or a Y configuration, which means they would literally appear in parallel with the delta configuration if they were in parallel. So we would just add those two parallel impedances together, or they would be in parallel with the Y connected load, which means we would just combine those impedances in a parallel combination. So this representation is literally the hardest thing we could possibly analyze. All right, so let's write down our known quantities here. We have an impedance. ZW, that is 0 0.2 plus J 0 0.1 ohms. We have an impedance Z delta, which is 12 plus J 9 ohms. And we have an impedance, I'm going to call it ZY1. It's going to be obvious why in a couple of minutes. Uh, that is 4 plus J 2 ohms. And we are told the current IAB has a value of 16 angle, 45 degrees amps RMS. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw that current here on our diagram. We are trying to find the phase voltages of our source. So that means this guy, this guy, or this guy. Okay. So the analysis here is going to be a little bit more involved because there's a lot more things going on. Um, We started off the last problem, which was arguably similar. It didn't have this Y connected guy here in the middle. By applying Kirchhoff's current law at this top node and figuring out what our line currents were. Okay. That's absolutely going to be a step in our analysis here. But the hiccup is if we apply KCL at this top node, not only are we going to have this phase current through our Z delta IAB and this phase current through our uh, delta, which is uh, uh, ICA flowing up here, but we also have this phase current through our Y connected load, which we don't really know how it's behaving. Brandon. So this is four plus uh, J2 and not four plus J3. Still count. Absolutely. All of the Z, oh, so let me write ZY1 actually. Um, one and one, so it's clear what I'm doing here. 
So it's balanced because all of these ZYs have the same value. All of these Z deltas have the same value. So it represents a balanced look for sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So how are we going to figure out what this current I A N is? Because once we know that, we're effectively back to the last problem that we worked, which was fairly trivial, despite the fact that it's a lightning bolt question in this particular textbook. Any thoughts? Chris? So in a balanced system, that would mean that I A N, I B N, and I C N sum together to be zero, but I don't know that that helps us particularly. So I want current, I know impedance. Another thing I obviously need to know then is voltage. All right, so let's address that real quick. Let's call this voltage. Any thoughts on how we might get that? There's no, no need, reason whatsoever to use mesh here. I mean, we could. Um, there, there are just six meshes. If we wanted to get a computer out and do all that kind of crap, we could absolutely do mesh, but there's no need. We can actually do all this just using basic algebra. Okay. So let me ask you guys a question. We draw another voltage. I'll do this one in purple. Do we have enough information to get this voltage VAB? Absolutely. What's the relationship between the line to line voltage and a line to neutral voltage? We take this guy, divide it by square root of three, angle 30, and we'd get this guy. We have to. You want me to prove it? No. Whenever you can, if you were to convert that delta value to a y value. Have a different right. That, that, that's the hard part of figuring out what's going on in these guys. Okay, so as soon as we do that transformation, um, right now we know what this current IAB is, right, with this delta configuration, which is going to give us this voltage, right? Because these guys are connected in parallel, this voltage VAB represents the line to line voltage across the Y connected load as well, which is why our transformation is going to work. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this VAB is going to be this VAN minus this VBN which will directly allow us to calculate that VAN. So VAB is IAB multiplied by the decimal. Everybody okay with that? So that's going to be 16 angle 45 degrees times 12 plus J9, which I get to be 240 point, excuse me, uh, just 240 straight up angle 81.870. Zero degrees 
volts RMS. Now, we are gonna use the transformation here to go from this line to line quantity to a line to neutral quantity, but we would absolutely get the exact same result applying Kirchhoff's voltage law around this little loop here. So that if you don't trust what I'm doing, you can do it a different way and literally get the exact same answer in the same number of steps. So I'm gonna say that the voltage VAN is simply the voltage VAB divided by square root of three angle 30 degrees, which is our transformation coefficient to go from a line to line to line to neutral voltage. What the heck? And I get that voltage to be 138.564 with an angle of 51.870 degrees volts RMS. From that voltage, I can now determine my current IAN. Which is just going to be VAN divided by the quantity ZY1, 4 plus J2. Which I got to be 30.984 angle 25.305 degrees amps RMS. We all okay thus far. So now I can get my line current. IAA just by applying Kirchhoff's current law, right? So my line current IAA, let's write this in orange. Is going to be IAB plus IAN minus ICA, right? Where the current ICA is this guy and it's getting subtracted because it's flowing in the opposite direction. Excuse me. Minus ICA, which is the same as IAB times one minus one angle negative 240 degrees plus IAN so let's see IAB was given to us 16 angle 45 One minus one angle negative 240 plus the variable that I have stored as Z. And I get 58.460 angle 20.440 degrees. Amps. Everybody verify that? Okay. So
now we can create our YY network, right? Our single phase equivalent network. So it's going to look like this. Here I have node A, my voltage, VAN. Here's node lowercase n. Here's my impedance ZW. There's my impedance cap, or excuse me, my terminal capital A. Here is ZY1. But I cannot forget that I also should have an impedance ZY2, which is the Y representation of my delta connected load, where ZY2 is just going to be Z delta over three, which is going to look like four plus J3 ohms. Here's the quantity IAA and here's our quantity VAN, which we know. So how do I get V lowercase a lowercase n? Yeah, absolutely right. So this voltage VAN just the voltage drop over my transmission line plus this voltage drop V capital A capital N. Oops, running out of room. So VAN is IAA times ZW plus VAN. So let's see, that's the variable that I have stored as A multiplied by my transmission line impedance, 0 0.2 plus J0.1. Oops. Plus the quantity VAN which I think I have stored as Y, we'll find out in a moment. Yeah. And so I get 151.593 angle 51.451. Volts, RMS. All right. How do I get VAB? The transformation thing. Multiply it by root three, angle 30 degrees. We'll tuck that in here. I get to be 262.567 angle 81.451 degrees volts. That one was legitimately hard. It took us 20 minutes. All right.
I'm trying to think of anything else that I could ask you guys that would be hard similar to this. And really the only thing I can think of, and it's kind of pretty much the only quantity we didn't wind up figuring out in this thing anyway, would be our phase currents in our source, which we would get simply by applying Kirchhoff's current law at this node with the understanding that we have IAB flowing down here and an ICA flowing up here that have the exact same magnitude and are separated by 240 degrees, right? This is literally as hard of a question as I could ever ask you, or anything harder could be simplified down to literally this exact circuit. So how do you guys feel? All right, I uploaded two homework sets um, five problems each, one of which is due, I think, Monday, and the other of which is due, I believe, on Wednesday. Um, so I honestly expected this to take slightly longer, but it's okay. I'm going to let you guys out half an hour early to get back to Brandon. So if I had... Right. So let's just do this real quick as a completely separate thing, okay? So if I have let's call this a b and c. And this is zy1 Right, and this is my neutral term. So these, for the load to be connected in parallel to that, that means that the A phase of the second load has to be between A and N. The B phase has to be between B and N, and the C phase has to be between, sorry, Y2. Uh, that looks like the hottest of garbage. And that has the wrong subscript, ZY2, ZY1, et cetera. So they would literally just, you would combine those two impedances in parallel. And it, it effectively the exact same thing if, two, if you had two delta connected loads. Luke. That's exactly what we did here in our single phase equivalent circuit. That's why we have two different things here. Now, the reason why we didn't do that from the jump, exactly right, because we had this current, which as soon as we do that transformation, this current no longer exists, or I guess it's really hard to define because a portion of it is gonna branch off and all that kind of stuff. So that's why I try to figure out what my line current is before I do my transformations because I know that that's pretty much the only quantity that isn't guaranteed to change, regardless of if my source is a Y or Delta and if my load is Y or Delta. The line current is the line current. Jared. There will be one more homework assignment that'll have uh, power related relationships, which is what we're gonna talk about on Monday. The power related relationships legitimately is not difficult. Okay, we could go through most of it in a couple of minutes. Um, what would be the power of the complex power absorbed by this load? This is phase. This VAB times this IAB conjugate. This guy will literally have the exact same amount of complex power. This guy will have the exact same of complex power. So this delta connected load absorbs three IAB, or excuse me, three VAB IAB conjugate. Similar thing for the Y. It's just our single phase relationships multiplied by a factor of three because there are three loads. And then when we do power factor correction, we have to remember that we're correcting with a three phase capacitor bank instead of a single capacitance. 
right? So we connect our capacitors as a three phase configuration, either a Y configuration or a Delta configuration. And that makes the math a little bit funny, but not really. The, the power relationships really are all we did for single phase, except that we have to remember when to multiply by three and when to divide by three. And then if we're dealing with line voltages or phase voltages, it might be the square root of three instead of three, which I'll cover all of that on Monday. Yeah, th this analysis stuff is way more important for you to be able to understand. The power relationships are almost the exact same thing as what we did with single phase circuits. All right. Yes, sir. I'm going to put the second design project up today. I'm also going to put your take home test up um, this weekend. I'm going to try to get it done tonight, uh, but for sure by the end of tomorrow so that you can actually, you know, work on it and turn it in before the end of the quarter. I'll probably go ahead and throw that third, uh, throw that last three phase uh, homework set up this weekend as well. Um, just so that if you feel comfortable playing around with your single phase relationships, you can get back on it too.